Hi everyone, it's Abigail from The Creative Bix, and today I'm going to show you how to make this fun infinity design in Procreate. It's really simple, so let's jump right into it. So before we begin, I just want to go over the things we'll be using in this tutorial. I will be using my iPad with my Apple Pencil. The app we're using is Procreate, and this is the canvas size I'm using. And then we'll also be using my retro line stamps from my shop, and I'll link those in the description below. So now we're on a blank canvas and the first thing I'm going to grab is one of my retro line stamps and I'm going to grab the three quarter from the 20 line set. This set comes with actually quite a few um, brush packs or um, categories. So it comes with 15 lines, 10 lines, 7, 5, 3. Um, so if in the 15 there's um, a tight section and a wide section and you can see the difference if you know you see this it's very tight on the circle and then if you know you go to the wider section it'll be like this where the the circle gets wider and you'll see it very clearly in the three retro line sections so there's tight medium and wide so this is the tight version and then I'll show you the medium where it just is a little bit wider and then the three line very wide where the circle in terms of the center space to the outer circumference so that's just a rundown of let me clear that that's just a rundown of my retro line stamp set and so there's just quite a quite a few but in um the 20 lines um it was just easier to keep it all as one so they're basically just all tight in the 20 line category so i'm gonna grab the three quarter version the first one so there's four different orientations we have one two three four so i'm going to grab the first one and just stamp it down on my canvas and then i'm going to add a layer and on this new layer i'm going to grab the third orientation and i'm going to just place that on top so it doesn't really matter where it is right now because what we're going to do is we're going to move them so that they can line up so I'm just going to take my move tool with this layer on and we want them separated right now so I can move them individually from each other. I'm just going to zoom in so that I can see where they're going to line up and that looks pretty good. I'm going to take it over by just tapping once to the side. It moves it by one pixel and maybe down by one pixel. So let's see. Perfect. That looks good. Okay, so now that they are aligned, I'm going to go into my layer panel and I'm just going to merge them together by pinching with my fingers so that they are now combined into one shape. And this just makes it easier so that when I start to color, I only have to color once instead of both of them. And so to color, I'm just going to do a gray scale. So I'm going to go from black all the way to white in kind of like a gradient tone. And it's kind of boring in the beginning, but you'll see why we do that this way in a minute. So first I'm gonna be in my classic color menu area right here. And I'm just gonna make sure I'm all the way down at black. And this, this whole stamp was stamped in black. So I'm just gonna slide it up a little bit on that left hand side ever so slightly. And I'm gonna color fill this second line. And then I'm gonna move it up again just a little bit. And I'm gonna color in the third line. And you can't really see a difference right now, but you'll be able to see it in, a, in a, when we get to a little bit of the lighter shades. So I'm gonna be right here and a little bit lighter. And you can start seeing it fill in. So I'm just tapping and dragging once I have that color from the top circle over here. And we're just moving up the very far left-hand side and we're just gonna keep going like this until we reach the white at the very top. Okay, and now I've colored everything, and because it's um, the last line is actually completely white and the background is also white, you can't see this one right here, but if I turn that background off, you can see that there's a stripe right there, but it kind of disappears when I have that white background on. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the adjustment menu and we're going to tap on gradient map. And in Procreate, the gradient map basically takes the shadows and highlights from the layer that you're on and applies the gradient colors that you've selected to it. So what I mean by that is when you tap on this gradient right here, you can see we have three different shades 
And so the gradient will basically be the darkest tones on the layer will show up as the color that you pick on the left, and then the brightest shades will show up as the color that you select on the right. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have your lightest shade on the right. You could totally flip it, um, but that's just the easiest way to think about it. And that's how it's going to appear. So if I, you can see that they have some pre-made um, gradients in their library. You can also make your own by tapping this plus sign. And then from here, like I can show you, if I wanted to flip it and have the lightest shade, oops, let me delete that, and have the lightest shade actually be the darkest shade, you can see how that would then be flipped. But I'm gonna leave it like this just to keep it easier to understand. And from here, you can add colors by tapping along the gradient and you can change them by tapping on it again and then selecting a color. So let's go ahead and let's do, I'm gonna do kind of a sunset, I think. I'm gonna start off with like a deep purple and then we'll just pick colors as we go along and see where we end up. And you can add honestly as many shades as you would like. I'm gonna move this down. Okay, so now I have my custom gradient and I'm just gonna tap done. And then you can just tap anywhere to get rid of that gradient map. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into our layer panel. We're gonna swipe to the left and tap duplicate. So now that we have two of these, and I wanna make this into kind of an infinity symbol. So I'm gonna tap on the move tool and then we're gonna tap on flip vertical. And now you have it so that it is perfectly lined up. If you were to tap say flip horizontal, the colors wouldn't align. So you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that you tap flip vertical and you'll be good to go. The next thing I'm gonna do is go back to my layer panel and I'm gonna tap on the top layer and add a layer mask. And what a layer mask does is we're gonna be using the grayscale again. So from shades from black to white, we're gonna be using those shades to either hide or reveal that part of the layer. So up here, I'm making sure that I'm on that layer mask and I have my Sadie brush selected and I have the color black. I'm drawing with the color black and you can see it's completely hiding it looks like i'm almost erasing this but you can see here that all of that color is still there so if i remove that layer mask if i just hide it you can see that nothing has actually changed so what this is a layer mask is just a non-destructive way of editing so if i use white now i can totally bring all of that back and then say you were to use you know a color gray it would just kind of be a little bit transparent and then if I used, you know, a very dark gray, it would almost completely erase, but you would still see it. So it really just depends on the color on your grayscale that you have selected. And that will either completely hide or reveal. So I'm going to clear this layer mask. And then I want to hide just this top portion right here of this layer so that it'll look like an infinity symbol. And so to do that, I'm going to, you can either, you know, do this by hand where you're kind of eyeballing it. You know, you could lower this and make sure you're completely going right up to the pixel. But you know, if you go a little bit too far, you might, you know, go over. So a little bit of a, a hack, an easier way to do this is we're going to select what we want to erase perfectly by pixel. So to do this, I'm gonna tap that lower layer and I'm gonna tap select. And then with that selected, you can see, I don't know if you can see this, if it shows up on camera, but there's a, a diagonal, um, diagonal lines going across the layers, um, the layer that is not, or the portion that is not selected right now. So right now, all of this is selected. This top layer is selected, but part of the screen is not. So I'm going to show you, it's kind of hard to explain, but I have this layer selected. So remember we went in, we tapped select, and then we're going to go up to the layer mask. And with my Sadie brush, in the color black, we're just gonna draw across. And I'm just gonna up this size so you can see it a lot better. And that way I don't have to worry about guesswork. So when you go in, you can see it's perfectly lined up. I'll do that again. I can go over and it's still, it's not gonna mess up. It's not gonna go too far. It just knows exactly where I selected and it's just gonna reach that part. So I'm gonna go over here and it's gonna perfectly follow that line. I'm just gonna make sure I have everything erased where I wanted it. And then I can unselect it by just tapping the selection tool again. And you can see right here, all of that part is um, covered in black on that layer mask. And now because 
that was mainly just to um, make sure the lines were clean up here. But if I zoom out, now I can go in and erase the back and make sure that I get it all and not have to worry about going over the lines except for right there. So this is where I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit. I had all of that selected. I'm just gonna go up to the line right there and just make sure I'm going inside this the cream right there. So I'm just gonna go in and this just helps clean out all the little lines in between here. And this is still on our layer mask, so we're not erasing. If we wanted to go back and redo something, we totally could, but this is just an easy way to um, kind of erase without erasing. And the last thing you might wanna do is add a shadow to make it appear like there's a little bit more depth on this infinity symbol. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select all these layers and I'm gonna group them. And then I'm gonna duplicate. So I'm gonna keep this as my separate layer in case I ever wanna go back and edit, but I'm just gonna turn that off for now. And what I'm gonna do up here is I'm going to flatten all of that. So now it's just one layer and I don't have to mess with two separate layers, but we still have this down here, the original two separate layers in case we needed to edit. So with that um, combined layer, I'm just gonna add a layer on top and I'm going to add a gray. I have kind of a medium tone, medium to darker tone gray, and I'm still using the Sadie brush, and I'm just going to draw a line where I want the shadow to eventually appear. I'm just gonna do that right there. And then right now it is, it's kind of going everywhere. It's not looking too neat. So I'm just going to add this as a clipping mask. And now that gray is clipped to these pixels below on that layer. From here, I'm gonna change the blend mode and you can test out a couple of different ways how you wanna do it, linear burn, color burn actually looks really fun um multiply let's see what else we have um i'm really liking i think color burn for this and from there now that we have this chosen as our um, blend mode we're going to go up to our adjustment menu one more time and tap gaussian blur and this is just a simple way to add a little bit of shade and i've gone up to about 24 percent and from there, after that, now we're gonna go back and we're just going to erase gently um, where the, the shadow is on top. You can't really tell with um, the color burn turned on, but if I did like linear burn, you can see exactly where um, that shadow is overlapping. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add a mask again. And actually, this is a good reason why we kept this, is I'm going to tap select on this layer, and then I'm gonna go up to my layer mask and I'm gonna make sure I have black selected. And then I can just go in and erase exactly where that shadow is on the top where I don't want it to be. Right there. And then same thing over here. We can just get rid of that shadow. Okay, and then to make it a little bit cleaner here, you can um, use the smudge tool on a layer mask. And I'm gonna, I have the soft airbrush, I think. That I'm using and you can just kind of smudge your shadow or if you don't want to do that you can um, erase or draw with a soft airbrush which will be a little bit cleaner for that I think same thing over here it's a little bit light and then you have your shadow and then you can go back to I changed it to linear burn to see where I was going with it but I'm going to change it back to color burn I think or, you know, this is kind of just where we go trial and error. Maybe if I turn down linear burn, let's go, yeah. Actually, you know what, linear burn looks good and we'll just keep it at the 53% opacity. And that's how you can make this really fun infinity design in Procreate using my retro line stamps and the gradient mapping tool in Procreate. There's other ways to do this on different types of software. This is just my favorite way to do it on Procreate. And if you decide that you want to recreate this, I would love to see your designs. You can tag me on Instagram at the Creative Bix. And thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment to let me know if you want to keep seeing more tutorials like this. It really means a lot to me. And have fun creating.